Ever since the introduction of Starlight Glimmer, in a creepy town where every pony has the same cutie mark, there has been a heated debate in the Brony community since the episode aired. Many are like, it's a communist commune. Others are saying, no, Starlight Glamour is a fascist. And others are thinking, no, it's just a cult society. So if you've ever wondered what it is, well, you're in luck because this is the in-depth analysis video the Brony community has been waiting for. Somebody right now screaming, so it's not communism. It's blah, 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 blah instead. But whatever, you're a nerd. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jeff, the Hallelujah Brony. Would it be a wild speculation to call the town a communist commune? Or could it be an accurate depiction? So get a pipe, put on your detective hat, cause we're going in. It's time to... Look for clues! Let me start off by asking, did you just assume that they're communists just because of their equal sign cutie marks? If that's the case, then I'm sorry to say to you that you are quite mistaken. A philosophy of everyone being equal is a form of egalitarianism. At its core, it's a social philosophy advocating for equal value and the removal of inequalities among people. It is a fair and noble pursuit where every pony has equal value within a society without discrimination. However, this is a very radical interpretation. Plus, the violent manner in which it was accomplished and maintained is obviously where the nobility sadly ends. But to be fair, Communism has adopted a similar type of philosophy which explains their similarities. So on the surface, it is easy to confuse the two. My point is that just because the town is striving to be an egalitarian society, it doesn't automatically make it communist. But hold on. If you're saying it's not communist, it's just a cult? Well, Jonestown was the home of an infamous cult led by Jim Jones, and it was founded to be a communist paradise modeled after the USSR, but it ended up a deadly nightmare. So the town could quite possibly be both a cult and a communist community. But to find out if it is, we must evaluate the political structure and its economic systems. Now is the time to dive into a socio-economic political analysis of this episode. Are you just excited as I am? I mean, cool. So is the town capitalist, socialist, communist, or fascist? But I'm getting ahead of myself now. I'll explain fascism later on. I assume that you either know these things, or that you'll pause to read further, so I'll be moving on. There's just one thing I want to clarify. Communism and socialism are often used interchangeably, but this is incorrect. Yes, communism is an extreme form of socialism, but as you can tell, socialism is not necessarily communism, because communism is anti-capitalist, whereas socialism displays many capitalistic characteristics. Now that we're on the same page, let's move on. Want to know which system I think works the best? For a short period of time, I used to be an advocate for communism. Ooh. Until that is, I went to the doctor. After I discussed my symptoms, she prescribed that I eat foods that are high in antioxidants. So I asked her, why antioxidants? And she responded saying, because it kills the free radicals in your cells. <laughs> so back on topic. Let's take a look at examples from the show by tackling these tough questions. So let's start by taking a look at what their social structure is. So which best describes the social structure of the town? I believe the existing evidence points to a classless society based around an egalitarian, or should I say an egalequestrian society that closely resembles the dystopian science fiction story Harrison Bergeron where all the skills are forcibly handicapped for an even playing field. So based on this description, I believe it is safe to say that the town's social structure most resembles communism. Do you agree? It seems that classes are abolished, but can the same be said about private property? Let's see who owns the businesses. But before we do, let's see who owns the housing. The whole village joins together to build you your own cottage. Not interested. Double Diamond said that she would have her own cottage. So which ownership model do you think best describes the housing arrangement? I believe that the existing evidence points to a socialist co-op property structure. This means that the cottages are exclusive legal property, but since the entire town helped during the construction process, the members of the community have control over who can live there. So did you come to the same conclusion? But what about business legal ownership? And this is a big deal because whoever owns the means of production tells a lot about the political and economic structure of a society. So what are the local businesses there? You got the apple vendor, the muffin baker, the tailor, the book quill shop, the barber, 
and of course, the leader. If the means of production belongs to the community and not the individual, that would make it communist. But if it belongs to the business owner or business owners who all make business decisions, then it would be capitalist. However, if there's a mix between private and public ownership, that would make it socialist. So which do you think it is? Honestly, unlike the first question, and I really don't have a definitive answer, it would just be purely speculation. Here to speculate, here are some subtle hints. It's our home. I'm not going anywhere. And I finally have a chance to make something besides terrible muffins. Beside investing in the new friendships, the fact that they stayed seems to suggest they might actually hold some legal ownership within the town, explaining why they have a vested interest in remaining within the community and seeing it succeed. My educated guess points to a socialist model of business ownership between the community and the private owners. So you might be asking, how did I come to this conclusion? I put two and two and two together, and it added up to... So finally, who or what manages the production and the distribution of goods and services within the town? This is a very complicated question. There's not a lot of information to build off of, but will that ever stop me? Never! Care to sample some local fashion? Isn't it odd that there only seems to be one type of cloak available this month? We have muffins. And the bakery only has muffins? The fact that there are limits in choice seems to suggest that Starlight Glimmer has been regulating what is or isn't produced. I've accidentally eaten cardboard tastier than that. With quality control like that, it's gotta be capitalist. Say what? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. This very much sounds like a command economy associated with communist and socialist structures. So if the production aspect of the economy are controlled by Starlight Glimmer, then who or what is in charge of the distribution of the goods and services? I believe it is possible that businesses have some discretion in the distribution process, because no pony stopped Pinkie Pie from ordering an exuberant amount of muffins. Make that 12! What? I'm hungry! And is it possible that the tailor is the one who sets the prices? We've got cloaks this month! And heck, is there even currency? And as you can tell, there's a lot of socialist attributes displayed in the episode. Hold on a second. The Nazis branded themselves as the Nationalist Socialist German Workers Party. So does that mean Starlight Glamour is a fascist? If you think the town is a fascist state, you might actually have a good case. It is led by a charismatic oppressive leader, and the town is obsessed with symbols like the equal sign cutie mark, and they sing propaganda songs. Plus, all forms of media and education revolve around the leader and their beliefs. It seems you inspire all sorts of free thinking, don't you? However, there are a few missing bits of information. One of the crucial facets of fascism is a social and political structure that revolves around the military. Sure, they may be marching, but there is no display of military weapons or their military prowess. Fascist states are usually structured around a patriarchal hierarchy that gives the man complete control over his wife and children. However, in this case, the leader is female and the town is egalitarian, so there's a lot that seems to go against the conventional fascist ideology. However, she is a cult of personality. Does that make her a cult leader? She has complete control over details in their daily life, from their hairstyle and even their clothing. Other identifiable characteristics of a cult include Every pony in Equestria will make a pilgrimage here to our little village. Each of us was confused once as well, blinded by the false promise of our cutie marks. After all, no pony has ever come to our village and wanted to leave. It seems some might be dissatisfied with the village life. <gasps> I brought you friendship. I brought you equality. I created harmony! So is it a cult? Survey says, yes. Okay, I'll wrap up now. If you think it's communist, I think you have a very convincing case. But if you think the town is fascist, I can see how you came to that conclusion. To be honest, this video was not made to answer what the town is. And no matter what you believe, we can all agree that there really isn't enough information to come to a confident conclusion. And rather than a simplistic answer labeling it as communist or fascist or it's just a cult, I challenge you to break it down into more detail. 
you can do so by answering these questions. But the conclusion I have reached is that the town is an egalitarian society with a mixed ownership model between the owner and Starlight Glimmer in a socialist market under the authority of a totalitarian cult leader. So in my opinion, I don't believe that Starlight Glimmer is a communist or even a fascist for that matter. But don't take my word for it. I encourage you to do your own research and I provided links down below. So do you have the same conclusion now as you did going into this video? So whether you agree or disagree with my conclusion, I hope you at least recognize the effort and research that I put into making this educational video. So please do me a favor and like this video and share this with your friends for them to give their two bits. I'm Jeff, the Hallelujah Brony, and putting analysis back in the term Brony Analyst is what I do. So subscribe for more because the best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and God bless. Thank you.